Hello, Mountain Song students and parents. Today I'm going to read The Solstice Badger. Written and illustrated by Robin McFadden. Back in the very beginning when the world was young, it was always summer. The sun walked unhurriedly across the sky in joy each day. But there came a time when his head grew heavy, his light was weaker, and all the first creatures worried and wondered. One evening as he was descending beneath the earth and the moon was rising, she called to him across the gulfs of the sky. My brother, you seem sad. What is wrong? Oh, sister, I am so lonely. Everything on earth, down to the little field mouse, has a companion. Even you have the stars. But I am alone, he sighed. Oh, I see, said she. I will spread the word, dear brother, and we will find you a friend. The moon whispers to the sea each night, and the sea listens. On this night, she told it what the sun had said. The sea told the fishes, and the fishes told the birds. The sun is lonely. Soon all the creatures of the air had heard the news, and they gathered to discuss the matter. What could be simpler, called the first crow, ruffling her white feathers. I myself will fly to the sun and keep him company. So it was that in the morning, as the sun began his journey, he saw a tiny white speck flying towards him. It grew bigger as it approached, and the sun thought joyfully, someone is coming to see me. It took Crow a long time to reach him, but she was as strong as she was stubborn, and finally alighted breathless on the sun's strong arm. I am here to accompany you, my lord, she gasped, bowing respectfully, but the sun was dismayed, for her feathers were blackening as he watched. I thank you for your courage and compassion, little grandmother, but I fear that if you stay with me, you will soon burn up altogether. Please go back home. Crow, her last white feathers frizzling away, was hurting too much to speak. She nodded and left. The next day, the hummingbird declared that he would try. Things that move quickly don't burn, he said, and the sun must have a companion. So he shot up into the sky like a comet, up and up. But it was much farther than he had thought. He wasn't quite halfway there when his tiny breast went crimson, crimson with effort and he fell, exhausted, back to the earth. After him, the eagle made the attempt, and the osprey, and albatross, and even the fat little sparrow. All the birds tried and failed. The sun grew more and more dismal. Far down under the surface of the earth, there is a river that flows from west to east, carrying anyone bold enough to lie in its swift current. It runs from horizon to horizon, and both the sun and moon rest in its waters whenever they aren't in the sky. Near this east flowing river, through a cave and to the left, lived the first badger. His tunnels went everywhere, and he loved the bright jewels he found in the darkness. He ate well on root vegetables, mushrooms, and subterranean berries. His home was a giant geode whose walls glittered and sparkled. In his solitude, he was content. One night, he heard someone crying and quickly followed the sound down one of his tunnels to the banks of the river east flowing. There he found the son, who had climbed out of the water for a while so he could weep where no one would see him. What is wrong? Badger asked gently. The sun startled, jumped to his feet. A new creature, he said. I have never seen anything like you before. But you should run away before I burn you. And he sobbed. But Badger shook his head. I have collected gems in the white hot center of the world, he said. You will not burn me. 
come to my home and have tea. And smiling through his tears, the son did. They spoke of many things together as kindred spirits do. At length, the son took his leave for it was nearly time for morning. That day he rose so clear and bright, all things living on earth knew that he must have found a friend and they were happy for him. That night he went straight to Badger's house where his own light was refracted and beautified by the crystal walls and they continued their talks and their stories. Badger loved to hear of the doings of those he called the surface peoples whom he'd never seen. So the son obligingly told him tales of turtle and otter, of horse and tree and bird and vine, so vividly that Badger could close his eyes and see them. The son was so engrossed in storytelling, Badger had to remind him when it was past time for him to leave. The next night it was Badger's turn to speak. He told of the heartbeat of the mother that you can only hear with your bones and of the fire sprites that dance in the glowing molten places. His adventures among mountains roots in underground geysers and down echoing pitch black natural stone wells had to be recounted. He told of the shallow tunnels from which he could listen to the surface, if not see it. And they both forgot the time and the sun left even later than before. Things went on this way for six full moons. The sun would rise a little later every day and walk a little faster across the sky. He was so preoccupied with thinking over things his friend had said or laughing over a joke they had shared that he didn't notice that the world below was changing. The leaves were falling, the winds were bitter, and the very first snow began to fall. The trees took it patiently because trees always do, but all the creatures were miserable. Came a day when the sun fairly sprinted through the sky, for he remembered a story he hadn't told Badger yet and couldn't wait to tell him. But when he reached the geode house, his friend was standing in the doorway looking sad. Come with me, said Badger, and walked away. The son hesitated before running to catch up. After all, in all this time, he had never gone into the dark places far from the river. Badger led him through many twisting, branching tunnels until he was quite lost. Now, my friend, listen, he whispered, and the son realized they were in a shallow tunnel. He listened and heard the sigh of the wind and creaking branches. He heard sounds of shivering and sneezing, but no bird song and no scampering feet. You have spent too much time with me, Badger said gently. The world misses you. The sun was filled with remorse over his thoughtlessness. He would have rushed to the sky and stayed there for weeks, but again, his prudent friend stopped him. Hasty repairs make weak burrows, he said. We must act wisely now, so we must consult the wisest of all things. You know the world and I do not. Who should we ask for guidance? The son pondered deeply for a moment, his brow furrowed, then said, the trees are the oldest things on earth and pine is the eldest of the trees. I think she will know what I must do but she may be angry with me. I will go to her, Badger said, and I will take gifts to soothe her anger. Together they returned to Badger's home where they filled a sack with all the most glorious gems he had collected and enough food for a mighty feast. Wait here for me, he told the son. Then for the first time, torch and paw, he tunneled to the surface. Pine stood in a glade in the forest. She was blanketed with snow, but her dignity and foliage were unchanged by the changing weather. Her spreading boughs sheltered a great many of the first creatures. 
She had hatched from her cone long before the first sunrise and had seen all things born of nothing, so she was not easily surprised. Thus it was that when Badger scrambled to the surface before her, she greeted him calmly. Hello, small animal who befriends the sun, she said, and her deep voice caused the ground to quiver. Welcome. He bowed low before her and said, my friend wishes to undo the harm he unwittingly caused. If he went back to his old ways, would the world be healed? If he brought the warm back tomorrow, Pine said, the world would drown in snow melt and all would be chaos. There was a short silence while the wind howled. Eventually Badger spoke again. Wise one, I have brought gifts for you. Will you accept them with our apologies and tell me what advice to give my only friend? He opened his sack to reveal foods beyond count and jewels without price. Pine looked at them thoughtfully. A generous gift, she told him, and one I have no use for. Give them to the creatures who have all suffered more than I. As for the solution, it is simple. The son must regain his old habits as gradually as he lost them. All good things in this world happen slowly. Seeds and eggs and seasons alike. Badger bowed deeply in thanks and turned to go. You will miss him. Her voice deep as a drumbeat forestalled any lie. He nodded and tears filled his eyes. You need not. The voice of the pine became so resonant it seemed to come from everywhere at once. My roots are on great mother's pulse and she speaks now through me. When seven cycles of the moon have passed, the days will be as long as ever, but then your visits together may grow again. After 13 months, the pattern will begin anew, for the sun must have a companion, and the badger must be rewarded for his selflessness. And the mother has decided to welcome the dark times and call them winter. All things alive held their breath in a moment of awe, then it passed. Badger joyfully cried, so mote it be. And on this night of every year, I promise to come to the surface and give gifts to all the small beasts. Gifts of thanks and blessings and love and a token of the sun's return. He held his torch up high and sang, here, take it, call them. Pine bent forward and grasped the light. When she straightened, it could be seen held firmly in her topmost twigs. Far and near, the creatures of the forest saw it flickering in the dark and began to draw closer. As they arrived one by one, they saw that Badger had been busy. Pine was covered in jewels that shimmered and sent rainbows dancing all over the glade. On the ground was spread a banquet, enough for everyone and more. Badger watched the glorious feast begin, well satisfied, then tunneled back home as fast as he could to tell the son the good news. And the next morning began a little earlier. As it was then when the world was young, so is it today. The seasons turn on the linchpin of a friendship. Each day the sun watches the world and everything in it for he is collecting stories to tell Badger. Their visits together grow longer every night for half a year. At the darkest times, we still honor the wise old pine by hanging jewels and lights in her branches. And on the longest night of all, Badger still comes to the surface bearing gifts. He gives them to all the small creatures who bear patiently the cold and the darkness, knowing that even the winter will forever be joyful as long as the solstice badger keeps his promise, and he always will. Thank you for listening.